Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the shop. So here we are at SNS 30. Wow. 30 episodes of this. I never realized that I was going to end up making this into a, a, such a long running series. Uh, SNS 30. You know, whenever I first started doing these, I, I had an idea to, to make a video every Saturday, or try to anyway bring you something every Saturday to uh, kick back and watch, but uh, I just didn't realize it was going to be this successful. And, you know, I, it's, uh, I think it's mostly because of the viewers and all of the feedback that I've gotten from you guys. And you really seem to enjoy the, uh, the format here. And the format being that it's, a, that it's a multiple subjects that I can involve in this video. Viewer mail, um, projects that I work on and, and, and who knows just whatever comes up that's what the that's what the SNS is all about it's just a different mixture of subjects so uh, I'm glad everybody is is continuing to enjoy them and I, I always try to bring something new to it whenever I can and it's, it's been a lot of fun so 30 episodes this, this one feels kind of special and uh, as long as everybody enjoys it, c continues to enjoy it, I'll keep making them. So just uh, let me know. <laughs> so this week, all right, well, we, uh, I decided to go ahead and play around on the KT. I put a cutter in there and, and started making a cut. Now I didn't, I wasn't able to use the, uh, the power feed on there because we still have not gone into the knee fixed it yet but I wanted to see it make a cut so I went ahead and played around on there so I've got a clip of that that I'll share with you and you can see I, I was having a lot of fun with it so so we got that uh, by the way James Kilroy did email me the schematics now for the uh, hydraulic system so I've got that and I uh, forwarded that to my buddy Paul also who's the hydraulic man and he's actually going to take those. It's uh, it's like a PDF PDF style format. Really nice, high quality scans. And he's going to take them. He put them on a thumb drive. He wants to take them to uh, Office Depot and get them printed out. The you know the big sheets. So uh, hopefully, real soon, we're going to come in and actually start working on this. We've all been really busy at work. Everybody's working overtime, and. I want to, I'm going to have my, my other coworker there, Joe, come and help me whenever he has time. So wh whatever, whenever that uh, works out for all of us that we can meet down here and go into the machine and play with it, we're going we're gonna to try to do that hopefully sooner than later. So uh, that's coming, hopefully. <laughs> uh, I've, got, I've got some viewer mill here that I want to show you. Uh, really cool, really cool uh, tool that somebody sent me. I'm going to pull that over. And I've got some work that I've, that I've done. I worked on the past couple of weeks. I had a little custom project that I was helping uh, do for my friend Cody. Uh, Cody works on uh, high-end restorations, muscle cars and classics. And they had, a, they had a complete custom job that they needed done and came to me and asked me, could I do it? And we found a way to make it happen. So uh, I've got that little project ahead. I also have one other little small job that I threw in there that I had to do at the same time that I was working on the other one. So that'll be uh, some machine work that we're gonna show this week. And uh, I think that's about it. I've got a lot of stuff to share with you, but I don't have enough room in one video to, to, uh, to throw it all in there. So we're gonna, we're gonna have, I've got some more stuff that I'm gonna have to just wait until uh, next week or maybe make a couple of little small videos for you. So I got one more thing I wanted to point on real quick. Um, Keith Rucker recently got a new chuck in a, in a drill chuck in a trade and i wanted to just point this out to keith this is my jacobs 18n super chuck and the 18n is good for three quarters and this is the one that you've seen me use plenty of times on the lathe and i just want to point out that the super chuck is my personal favorite 
I like the, 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 it's got the ball bearing, the thrust bearing in here, and you can really get a nice good feel and uh, some torque on this uh, chuck key whenever you're tightening something up. So if you're, if you're gonna look for another chuck, a, a larger one, I would recommend going with this 18N if you can find one. Uh, maybe one of you guys out there watching this has a setup like this or a good drill chuck that maybe you can offer up to Keith in a trade. I'm sure that it would it would serve really helpful with his work, and just wanted to share that. Uh, awesome chuck at 18 in. I also wanted to point out that I went to the a couple years ago when I went to the Moultrie Georgia swap meet and I bought some of those tools. The guy had a had a had one bigger than this. I want to say it was a 20 in. It would hold up to one inch. It was brand new still had the box that it came in and the thing was pristine and i wish that i would have bought it but i didn't uh, he was asking a hundred dollars for it which when i was there shopping and looking i thought that was a little bit high and it wasn't something i was really really needing or hunting but uh, i plan on going back this year and i'm hoping maybe he still has that chuck or if i can find another one so i, I do hopefully one of these days he's going to find me a bigger uh, I believe it's the 20 in. So, uh, Keith, if you're going to look for one, this is what you need, man. Get you an 18 in Super Chuck by Jacobs with a number four Morse taper adapter on it. And this will help you all out a lot with your work, man. Okay, so uh, that's about it for the uh, the chit chats. We'll go ahead and get to some projects and, and some other stuff. Hope you guys enjoy. And uh, thanks, everybody, for all your continued support, okay? I thought maybe we could celebrate the 30th episode of SNS with a little bit of a little bit of cutting action on the Kearney and Trekker Mill here. Uh, today is Sunday. I'm just out here kind of playing around, uh, catching up on comments and uh, making some new video for you. And it's been killing me because I want to get over here and, and just play on the mill and and watch it cut, make a make a cut through something. So I decided to go ahead and and set this other milling vise I have up. This is one that used to be on my do-all. And I'm using the piece that I used in chip control. It was a good scrap piece of material. And I left the uh, 7 16 cutter in there that James Green gave me, just using it uh, just to make a cut through a piece of metal. And I also, I just hooked up the digital readout. And, and it is working, so uh, thank you James for getting that fixed up. Uh, the reason why I hooked that thing up, it's funny, I never realized it until now, I mean earlier when I was setting this up, that the dials on this thing is actually metric. And I never paid attention to them to realize that they were metric. I just thought it was thousands of an inch here, you know, imperial sizing. But uh, So the dials are in metric. So I had touched off my cutter and then fed it up what I thought was uh, 218, uh, which is half of 7 16th. Went in there, and I started cutting, and I realized, I said, that, that doesn't look right. That don't look deep enough. So I backed out and measured it, and you know, I was like half, I was only like halfway there. So I uh, figured out that I'm, I'm reading metric on these dials right here. So I, uh, I stole a computer cord off one of my old computers inside the house and got the, uh, DRO hooked up and it's working. So I don't have power feed yet. I have not gone into the mill. Uh, I would, I will point out that a few of the guys mentioned checking the uh, pickup screen for the uh, for the oil. So I did take the cover back off and I reached in there and there's a long screen that's connected to the end of that hose and it's pretty rigid in there. And I, I didn't feel any obstructions but I rubbed my hand up and down that screen trying to unblock it if, it, if in case there was, and uh, it didn't help. Although I will say that when I first fired it off this morning, I thought I would go ahead and play with the rapid again just to see. I was getting a little bit more pressure right here. And so I put it in power feed and I hit it and I was actually able to make the table move. I mean, and, and it moved. Uh, that was kind of an exciting moment but I know that's not fixed itself. I still got to go into it. So I'm going to make a cut in this piece of steel just for fun, just to, just to make some chips on this thing. 
and I'm gonna hand crank it. So I'll bring the camera over here and, and uh, let you guys see me make my first cut on the Kearney and Trekker mill. Okay guys, here we go. I don't have flood coolant set up yet, so I'm just using my mister for this. There's a close-up of the first cut that I've made across it. I am getting a little bit of chatter at the bottom, the bottom of the cut. So at this point, with that being my first cut, I'm not sure if uh, if it's the rigidness of the one-inch arbor because that's what I'm using is a one-inch arbor, and also the uh, the style A arbor support, which is out here on the end of the arbor. Uh, what I need. What I got to do is um, on my uh, my other outboard support here. I've got to um, I've got to work on the bushing that will go on here and ride on this bushing. I believe this will give us some better support. And uh, again, I I haven't I haven't measured the diameter here to see how much clearance is in this bushing either. I just uh, you know just put it together and just been playing with it. So, that was fun. All right, so here's our viewer mail for the week. And this box come to us from Colin Chapet. He's from Appleton, Newfoundland, Canada. And he also has a channel on YouTube called Competitive Edge. Does some cool videos. So uh, if you don't know about him, go check his videos out. So let's see what Colin sent me. Alright, he, he sent me a note here also. Well, let's uh, let's check it out first. Check that sucker out, man. What Colin has made here is a super sweet multi-axis stop for the miller machine it shares the uh, the same style as the as the kind that you can you can buy you know a manufactured style the uh, multi-axis stop and <laughs> he said that whenever he seen me doing the uh when i was using the die head and i had the rod set up in the mill that it gave him the idea to make this so uh so he made me one and colin Fantastic machine work, nice craftsmanship, everything looks great. Uh, I have not tested it out yet, but we will very soon. I like your design here. Everything, everything seems to fit really nice. You've got a, uh, looks like a, a nylon washer up here to tighten up the clamp for the rod. 
and <clears throat> once you tighten this up it'll it'll tighten up all of it there nice feel there there's the clamp that you uh, where you tighten down in the in the mill machine table slot He even machined the T-nut there. Nice fit and finish. And an excellent tool, buddy. So yeah, I do not have one of these, and I have always wanted one. Always see them in the in the, the tool catalogs for sale. And just I just never invested in one. So this is gonna uh, serve as a very useful tool in my shop man and and you'll see me using it whenever I need to set up a stop we'll definitely pull this thing out and it's uh, you know it's just extra special the fact that you actually made this thing for me as I said great work on it I don't even know how you how you did all this um, I don't know if you if you bandsaw this and then dressed it if I had to guess, it almost looks like a, like a fly cut. Like you had a big fly cutter set up on your mill and came in here and machined, a, machined this radius on each side. So in the note that Colin sent me, he said, Adam, after watching the geometric head video and seeing your setup for a mill stop, you got me thinking. So here's the result of that thought. I made a couple of these. Uh, one is mine. And uh, the other one is for somebody else. I'm not going to say who it's for because I don't want to ruin that surprise. But uh, try out my design. Maybe I'll go to market. Colin. Colin, you got a great design there, man, and, and a nice tool. So maybe you can uh, go into production and start making some money on these things, man. Excellent tool. Great work. And I can't thank you enough. I will uh, I will keep you in mind. And uh, maybe one of these days I can send a package up uh, north over the border to you. All right, man. Thank you very much. All right, I'm actually remaking this little clip here because apparently whenever I filmed it, I forgot to record it or save it on the computer and I lost it. So this is the uh, intro of what I'm doing on this week's project. And what it was is uh, this is a, a wiper arm off of a Chevy Nova, old classic Chevy Nova. And uh, this was the project that Cody brought to me and asked me, could I somehow modify these to where this little bushing that the wiper arm presses onto, he needed this thing extended out. Like, basically where the face of, face of it is now, that's where he needed the bottom of it to sit, so about a half inch. So that's what, this is the one that he brought to me as a, as a sample to see if I could kind of get it apart and find out if I could do anything with it. And once I, once I did, uh, he brought me the other one and brought some some new uh, spline bushings here to use on the on the uh, the one I was going to repair. But that's what the uh, that's what the project's about. I was able to get one of these off right here, and uh, we had to go in here and make some new uh, some pins for it and do some other machine work and put it all back together. So uh, anyway, <laughs> that's what the uh, project for this week is. And uh, we'll, we'll continue on now with the uh, rest of the video that I already made. Got the first one out. I'm just grinding the head of this pin off there. And then um, basically once I grind this off, I can flip it over and hit it with a hammer and it, it'll pop out of there. I'm getting started on these little pins that I got to make for the uh, for the wiper the wiper arm project. Here's the ones. Here's one of the ones I took out. So it'll, it'll kind of look like this. I'm using three quarter because I, I want a three quarter flange down here on the back side. So it's going to look similar to this, a little bit longer. I got me a little, just a little sketch here, what what I need to do. 
and I'm going to use this little uh, insert that Tom gave me, CNGP 430. But I don't think I'm going to be able to get all the way down in, in there for the diameter that I've got to finish it at. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to end up hitting that center. So I may end up having to take this tool out after a few cuts and just go with a high-speed tool bit. So we'll, uh, we'll see. I've already got everything set to start making the cut. That sort of works good on that cold roll. Alright, I had to switch out my carbide because it would not fit down in this area here to uh, keep turning uh, down what I need. Uh, I've got to turn it to 3 8 for one little area about an eighth inch long right here at the end. And then the rest of it here will be uh, 5 16 and then we'll have a uh, quarter inch diameter down here. I'm just using my uh, one of my high-speed tool bits. Running the same RPM, I'm at 700. About a 5,000 speed rate. That's going to be the diameter it's going to fit through the uh, factory plate where it's going to be welded all right that's about 385 okay so i gotta stop on this for a few minutes and and jump on something else uh, i need to make a little shad for somebody that's down so we're going to uh we're going to switch over to the milling machine and uh, uh mill a couple keyways in a shaft This is a 1 and 3 16 shaft, 18 inches long. We've got a mill a keyway on each end, 3 inches long. Keyway is going to be a quarter inch. I'm just going to go ahead and find the center. Using a half inch edge, edge finder. Half the shaft diameter, half the edge finder diameter is 843 and a half. Okay. So I need to find a new mill. I want to set up my cool mist also and use that. That's what I got it for is keyways. I get all that set up and we'll mill a key. Over here, find me an end mill. Uh, I'm going to use a Brew Baker quarter inch two flute. Uh, I thought I'd show you this. This is one of my cabinets here. I've got a lot of bins on the wall with, with lots of older end mills. Many of them are still brand new, but this is where I keep a lot of my new stuff that I purchase. So you can see here, I've got a bunch of uh, these are all like 3 16 and quarter inch end mills. Uh, a lot of new ones, there's some older ones down in there. These, these are a bunch of new uh, 5 16 Union Butterfield end mills and a bunch of big ones all mixed in different sizes here. Some taps. So this is just one of my drawers where I keep a lot of my newer stuff. Um, mainly go to it for these little small end mills. So, all right, let's go cut a key. Alright, just coming up to my little sharpie line. Okay, there's first side done. So all I'm gonna do is just take this shaft out, flip it around. I'll level up the keyway, tighten it up, and we'll uh, cut the other side.
Right. Quick, simple little job. Just gotta pull it out. I'll uh, I'll deburr the edges of the keyway, and we'll be good to go. All right, guys, there it is. One and three sixteenths by eighteen shaft, quarter inch keyway on each end, three inches long. I did double check it with my calipers, and keyways are uh, on size. Uh, this is actually going to be a, goes in a ventilation system. Uh, I believe a hood vent at a Hardy's restaurant. Their, I don't know what location, but one of their their hoods failed today, so that they don't have any ventilation going in, in there where they're cooking. <laughs> and uh, so one of the climate control places was scrambling, trying to find somebody that could uh, make them a shaft real quick. So I was just lucky that I had a piece of one and three sixteenths already, some stuff that I had uh, bought and put underneath the shelf. So this one's done. And uh, now we can get back over here on the lathe and finish our turning. All right, I went ahead and turned it down to the 5 sixteenths. I haven't filed it or polished it or anything. And uh, my tool has left a really nice, smooth finish on it. And this is the piece that will go over it right here. That's it. That's actually a good fit. So, this is the end here that will turn down we're going to turn this in right here for um, the little the little spline piece that slides down there with a set screw that's a big quarter inch you know I just realized that I that I almost goofed up here okay <laughs> I've even got a drawing and I still didn't do it right so that's that's what the original looks like and that's that's what was going through my mind this end right here is where the the old spline piece was pressed on but what I need is another half inch past it here so this is going to be um, actually seven eighths of an inch sticking out right here so what I'm going to have to do is turn turn these two shoulders back another half inch this way to give me what I need out here on the end and uh, what I'm probably going to have to do, I need something to fill the gap here. Let me grab the other piece. Okay, so it'll be sitting here like this. It's going to go on there like that. So I'm going to have to, I'll probably take a little piece of uh, bronze, uh, a brass or something, and basically just make a little bushing that'll go in between here to, uh, to fill that up. So, all right, let me... Uh, let me turn it on back some. Should be the right shoulder length. Okay. All right, good. Now we'll turn the end. Half inch back down to quarter inch. told you guys wrong again I don't know what's wrong with me today I don't want it a half inch back <clears throat> what I want is a half inch from the top of this piece right here a half inch is what the uh, half inch is what the other one was sitting at it was half inch long so the the proper length of it that we needed was what if this was sitting right on top of the old one that's how much extra they needed on that. It, was, it wasn't much. So I'm just gonna butt my scale against there and I've got it lined up on a half inch and that's where I'm gonna turn it to. It's, uh, it's basically 3 eighths, a 3 eighths of the length right there, 375. Okay. 
probably have to file that edge there for I can get it on, but that's it. Got a nice fit on there too. Alright, so now you're finally seeing what it'll look like. So like I said, I'll probably take a piece of brass. I don't even know if you've seen all that I'm over here rambling on. Uh, this this gap that's right in here, this half inch gap, I'll probably take a little piece of bronze and make a bushing. Uh, you gotta have something to keep this from trying to move up and down, so um, I'll make a bushing to go in there that'll capture it. So, all right. Once I get these made, I'll probably mill a, a little small flat on here for the set screw to tighten against, help lock that piece on there. All right, let's try parting this thing off. Using one of them insert tools. That's the uh, that's actually the smallest parting insert that I have there. Let's we'll see how it does. flat on these little shafts here. Here they both are by the way. I'm going to put a little flat on the end for the set screw. I'm going to use my little 5C collet block for this. Got a 5 16 collet in there. We're going to use a spanner nut to uh, tighten it up. So Just stick it in here and snug the vise up. I got a pin spanner wrench. Give that a snug. And I'm just going to kind of do this by sight and I'll make the second one the same. We'll uh, touch off and make a little measurement here. Twenty thousandths. There we go. The two flats mill. So we'll move on. We're going to make a couple small bushings that'll slide on behind these uh, the other pieces here. Okay, here's my stock. It's a piece of three quarter. We got to turn the OD down quite a bit. Uh, just don't have any small brass, but. Uh, Gonna drill at 1964s and then I'll run the reamer through there. It's 5 16 That should give it a nice fit. By the way, that little ticking sound that you hear is coming from the collet chuck itself right here. That's what's making that noise anytime you sit and hear me use this right here. Tighten up the screws to help try to eliminate it, and it just seemed like it made it worse. Yeah, that's a good fit. Got my little boring bar set up, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to counter bore one side of these bushings, one eight deep, and I'm just going to open it up. What I want it to do is slide over this an eighth of an inch to kind of cover this lip up, and maybe help with the moisture and the rain and stuff from trying to fall directly down into the hole. 
So that's what my idea is. So the bushing will be uh, five eighths long, but it'd be counterboard eighth of an inch deep to go over this. got to deburr that other side. Uh, let me get another one made real quick. Thought I'd give you a little close-up of how this stuff's going to go together before I weld it. The uh, See the little step here? I turned that so that it would fit this hole here and center up on it like that. All right, so you just take one of these once this is welded on, of course, and then that slides down. And there's little bushings inside these right here, so I'll uh, I'll put some grease on this after it's welded, and you slide it down. And then you take the little bushing, put the counterboard side down so that it'll fit over it, kind of like a little hat, like that. And then the uh, the new spline bushing. Goes on there like so, and then tighten the uh, tighten the set screw, and that's it. And of course, that'll be that'll be welded there. We'll put a couple, I don't know, at least a couple nice uh, TIG welds on that, and then this piece rotates. Because this is bolted to the body of the car, so then the brackets, the brackets in here doing this, moving, and it's, well, I can't do it by holding it, but maybe you get the idea. As that's rotating back and forth, this, this pin's moving with it. So, I give them what they wanted. They needed some more height there, and that's what I did. So we're almost done with it. Just got to go over and get the TIG welder set up and get these things welded on. Finally making use of the little brownie clamps. Those things work perfect for this little job here. <clears throat> got it all pulled up and um, getting ready to uh, TIG it together here. Get everything. Ok, 
Okay, one down. I think that'll be just fine. All right, guys, I'm just putting this thing together. Uh, they'll probably take it back apart to uh, paint it and everything again, but I'm at least have it together for the final shot here so they can see it too. Just putting a little bit of grease on these shafts. That one good. And a little bushing. Okay, it's been nice. The grease helped a lot too. That's about how it works there. It'll, this being held to the body, this is going back and forth. Feels good. Well, this job's finally done then. I'll give Cody a call and let him know he can come and get them. Uh, I hope they're happy with it. It, it looks pretty good and it's, uh, it's what they wanted. They need a little extra height on it. So, all right guys, this one's done. <laughs> hope you had fun watching me. See you next time.